lesson, we'll place L-beams and a few inverted T-beams into our building design. Okay, so picking up where we left off, we're here in our elevation view looking at the north side. And what I want to do now is place some of the beams. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to place a few reference planes. That way I make sure I get my beams placed at the right elevation. So I'm simply going to go to reference plane, and I'm going to do my pick offset. And I want to offset 18 inches below every level. Um, and I'll explain it to you why here shortly. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the height of our offset to one foot six inches and now we can offset just below each one of these levels so what this uh, besides our first level so what the, what the uh, reference plane represents here is I know that in my design I want the top surface of my floor to coincide exactly with what's going on with my levels and I know that the thickness of my floor which is taken into account the thickness of the top slab and also the uh, beams that are kind of poured into that floor is 18 inches so when I place my beams I want to make sure I get those placed at a position where I can actually have my flooring resting on top of those beams. And that's the main difference when you're working with uh, the precast structures is in steel and wood, we actually are fastening these materials together or welding or connecting. With this, we're using the material's own weight along with gravity with a little bit of extra reinforcement to keep things in place. So we're actually placing items on top of things and there's real no obvious connections that we're going to be placing. So with this in mind, um, let's go ahead and start placing some of our beams. So we have our 18 inches below. We know where our floor is going to be, where the bottom of our floor is. I think we're ready for these beams. So we could start here in a structural view on my first floor. And we'll go ahead and start from the outside and work our way in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have two to three different types of beams. Uh, the first ones we're going to place are going to be our L beams and they're going to go on the outside here and what they're going to do is support the flooring. The flooring is actually going to rest inside that lip, inside that L beam. And then in the middle we'll have the T beams here and they'll have uh, they'll be supporting these two floors that are going to be on this side. Um, that's why we have the inverted T. So we have two lips or, that uh, will actually be holding on to a piece of structure. So again, again, we'll start from the outside and work our way down. Okay, we're going to make sure we're on level one. We'll go to the structure tab, and we are looking for some beams. And let's go ahead and hunt one down. So I'm going to load family, and we're going to go to structural framing, precast concrete, and we're looking for L-shaped beam here, and somewhere in our menu here. We've got quite a bit to choose from here. And we want the L-shaped beam, and that's the one we want right here. I'm going to click OK, Open. And I'm not going to merely make any changes to the parameters or dimensions of this thing. It's, I like what we have already with the default here. So before I begin placing my beams, I want to make sure I have uh, my placement plane set properly. So we're definitely on level 1. But again, we're really concerned with the placement of this because we want to make sure this beam is in the right position to hold up the floor. And from setting my reference plane, I know that I'm going to have to set a Z offset for this beam at about 9 feet 6 inches with a top offset. So I'm just going to go to uh, make sure my Z justification is at the top and we're going to set that to 9 foot 6 inches and what this will do is make sure that the actual lip is going to or the top of our beam will be set at 9 foot 6 inches but the, the actual lip that will support the floor will be located at 8 foot 6 inches. So once I have those set I'm going to click apply and let's place our first beam and we can check out our progress here. So again, we're gonna they're gonna go right in between grid lines one and two, two and three, three and four, and we'll end up doing the same thing down here along grid line C. So we'll place our first one and I'll show you how this works out. So we're simply gonna click and drag. And right now you really don't see it is because we need to change our view range. Um, and what I like to do is if I know that I'm working with a particular component that's going to be set at a certain elevation and I need to see its placement, I'm going to make sure my view range is set to that elevation. So in our case, it needs to be, and we could set it to 8 foot 6 if you wanted to, but I'm going to do 9 foot 6. Or we'll do 10 foot, or we'll do 10 foot actually. So I'll go to um, my view range here, clicking in my view, I'm going to go ahead and Roll down here, we'll go to view range. And we have a couple of dimensions here. We want to make sure when we're setting this that we our top and our cut plane are going to be the same dimension. 
So I want that one to be 10 feet and my cut plane to be 10 feet. I'll click apply and we should see that being perfect. And while we're here, let's go ahead and adjust our graphic displays so we can see exactly what's going to happen here because we're getting really line intensive with all our grid lines and reference planes and even the forms of our, our shapes here. So I'm going to go to graphic display and we'll add some consistent coloring. And I like how that you have two different colors for our concrete. Our footing has one color and our precast structure here has another color, making this really easy to read. So now that we have that set, this one's in its proper position. Let's go ahead and just copy that one. And we're going to click and drag and place the rest since we've already got the parameters set properly. I'm going to copy again, click and drag and make sure I'm snapping to my endpoints. So let's jump to an elevation view, make sure we are in good shape here. I bet the east view will be the best. For right now, I'm going to go to wireframe just so I can see through my elements here and see where my beams are. And we are in good position right here. As, as I mentioned, we wanted our lip to be right there at that 8 foot 6 mark. So we have the top of our floor here and the bottom of our floor is resting right inside that lip. So let's jump back to our first floor plan and we're going to use our mirror tool. It's going to help us get this job done really quick. So I'm going to click on it, right click, and I'm going to select all instances in my entire project. That's going to select every single beam I've ever placed in this project. In this case, it's only three. Um, and we're going to mirror by selecting an axis. And we're going to mirror off of this axis here. And like magic, we've got our beams on this side. And they will jump to another elevation view just to make sure they are placed properly. So we're in good shape. So now what I can do is I can click on these guys. And I'm going to right click again and I'm going to select every instance in this entire project. And I really like using this tool. This will save us a ton of time as well. We're going to copy this to the clipboard. And under the paste, we're going to go to the drop down. We're going to select align to selected levels. And I want Revit to paste what we just selected to levels two and three. So I'm going to use my control button to select both of those. So when I click OK, I'm going to back out just a bit. We've got our beams in place and we don't have to go to each level and do the same thing over and over. So now let's uh, finish off our beam placement um, with focusing here in the middle. We'll add our inverted T beams. So again, I'm going to jump to my level one. And let's go hunt down some inverted T beams. So I'm going to go to structure. I'll go to uh, beam here. We're going to load a family and again, structural framing. Let's go with our precast concrete, and we want our inverted T-beams. So we have the normal T-beams, like these guys here, saddleback T-beam, but we want the upside down, the inverted T-beam. So let's see if we could find this. Perfect. Now, when I place this one, I may need to change some of the dimensions. Um, I'll show you exactly why here in just a second. So again, this beam here is going to go right in the middle, and it's going to go at the same elevation as our L-beam, so we don't need to make any changes to our view range. But I do want to show you some of the changes we need to make. So as you can see, once I place this inverted T-beam in here, it's a little bit wider than our columns, uh, giving us this extrusion here. So what I want to do is I want to adjust the dimensions on my T-beam here to where it lines up exactly with what's going on with our columns. Um, it'll make it a lot stronger. I won't have any weak concrete hanging off of here, and it'll make it just a much better support. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to edit its type. And I knew from earlier research I needed to change it up just a little bit. So I need to change its B dimension right here. And that needs to change to 1 foot 8. But before I make that change, um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the one we have here. And I'm going to change its name to, refl to reflect the change that we're getting ready to make. So we don't need this 2 here because we're not duplicating the same one. But we do need to change this initial dimension here in the prefix. So it's going to be uh, 18 or 1 foot 8, which is 20 inches. So I'll just change that 24 to a 20. That way I know exactly what it is later. I'll click OK. And we need to change our B dimension to 1 foot 8. 1 foot 8 inches. I'll click OK. And you can see that change has been made. And it fits there nicely. Um, one thing we can do here, you can notice the thick lines. Um, when I'm working with these structures, I like to work with thin lines. It gives me that extra reassurance that I am lining up all my midpoints and making things look good. So I'm simply going to type in TL and it's going to give me thin lines. So let's really quickly finish out these beams here. So we're going to select the one we just placed. 
Uh, we're going to copy that one, and we're simply going to do the same process we did when we're using or placing our L beams. Again, copy, click, and making sure I'm placing at the midpoint, we are in good shape. So now that we have those there, let's go ahead and copy those up to the rest of the floors. So we'll select that one. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select all the instances in my entire project, which will just be this category of beam. And we're going to copy it to our clipboard. Select align levels and we're going to add it to levels two and level three. And I'm going to click OK. And let's jump to 3D view just to make sure we are looking good and in shape. I'm going to adjust my graphic display here to a more consistent color as well. So we've got most of our beams in place. So now that we have our inverted T's and our L beams in place, we'll, uh, in the next lesson, we'll finish up our beam placement with some I beams uh, going along the two sides here. So I'll see you in the next lesson.